Welcome to In the Studio. Today we have special guests, the Reverend John Pamperin, who's a living legend in our community, and we also with the, have with us Rick Gonzalez, Jr., who also is a legend in our community. He's the president of the Mexican American Concilio. Reverend John Pamperin is a longtime activist, campus minister, community minister, and he's been around for a long time fighting for peace and justice for all. So we're going to focus this segment on Reverend John Pamperin, the early years, and Rick Gonzalez Jr. is here because Reverend Pamperin worked with his father, Rick Gonzalez Sr., to help Mexican Americans and farm workers on the major issues of that time. So we'll start with um, Reverend Pamperin. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, John, and, and tell us about the early years. This segment is going to be on the early years. Well, I came to Davis in 1963 uh, as assistant campus minister at the Cal Aggie Christian Association under the direction of David Bernight, who is now 91, I think. <laughs> I'm 81. And so we've seen a lot of uh, growth in this community and particularly in the activism represented by Rick and yourself, Tim. And uh, I, I was trying to think what our seminary training was like. At the, I went to the University of Chicago, Dash Chicago Theological Seminary. And uh, it was very focused on activism. Uh, we saw Cesar Chavez my first year at seminary. He came to talk about farm labor in California. Uh, we had in the uh, faculty, Mircea Eliade, who was the world expert on uh, history of religions. And he uh, exposed us all to the other world religions besides Christianity. And that included uh, all of them, a very famous theologian of that time, would join Eliade, and that was uh, Dr. Paul Tillich. And together, they would talk about the other religions. Tillich actually went to Japan, and I remember at the first lecture after he got back, he said, we need to study Buddhism. And of course, now almost everybody has studied Buddhism, or has been exposed to what that history is. The other thing to say is we at seminary uh, were, the activism was almost constant. Our faculty went to a faculty in the South, which the ministers had been fired uh, for being uh, pro-civil rights. And we saw things like that. Some of you have heard of, uh, uh, I'm blocking on the community organizer. I need a little help. Oh, I know what you're Saul talking about. Alinsky. Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky, yeah. I worked for Saul Alinsky one year, and we studied A&P uh, grocery store, and <laughs> were they making mistakes on people that were poor, and we found out they were at that time. And they corrected that. They were cheating people? Yes. And uh, so this became, for me, just kind of uh, everyday stuff. And uh, then I have a little uh, history in basketball. And somebody in the minute, in the, my friend who was uh, serving a church said, come on over and uh, do basketball on Sunday afternoon. And it was in the black section of Chicago, and 200 kids showed up. And uh, I went to preach to them that they could go to the University of Wisconsin if they got good enough. And they said, I don't know if you, what you know about this, but we don't graduate from junior high. And these were the gangs of Chicago at the time. Black, Blackstone Rangers? Blackstone Rangers. In fact, I coached their basketball team. They, they weren't very good basketball players, but they sure loved being coached. 
<laughs> and uh, I did uh, some ministry with their parents in the public housing. And so the next thing we did, we got involved in the housing issue at the University of Chicago. And one of the uh, students was Bernie Sanders. And uh, he was getting, I think, a degree. I'm not quite sure what the degree was in. But uh, there we all were connected. And so when I got to Davis, why not? Let's bring Cesar Chavez to Davis. Well, that was pretty controversial, to be frank. And uh, Rick's dad was very important to translating what that meant in terms of uh, Mexican farm labor. And then uh, uh, Chavez was working with Jerry Brown, the first Brown as governor, to do a labor bill for the farm labor. Rick's dad worked on that. And uh, so we found him a place to stay, and we benefited by going over to the house where he stayed, the Waring's house, and we'd get an update from Caesar on what was happening in uh, not just unions, but in labor for farm workers. And uh, uh, we, uh, now something that affects me, we got porta potties for the uh, laborers. And now I'm trying to get a porta potty at Cash Creek for myself. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go back since you were talking about yes. Cesar Chavez. I'm going to let uh, Rick here. Um, now, these are early years, but we're going to go back to even your childhood. But let's go back to the Lifetime Achievement Award that you just received from the Mexican American Concilio of Yolo County, of which Rick Gonzalez Jr. is the president. And uh, Rick, can you tell us about some of the um, impact, as much as possible, off the top of your head, that, that John Pamperin has, has had in this community, the work he's done, and why he was deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award that your organization just gave him on mm -hmm. the 14th of uh, October recently? Yes, uh, we just had our uh, 33rd annual Concilio Recognition Dinner uh, and Scholarship Fundraiser. Uh, where we honor 14 students from uh, local high schools in Yolo County, as well as we honoring nine adults who have made a difference in the, uh, in the quality of life for Yolo County. Uh, we have categories, and one of the categories is the Lifetime Achievement Award, which is a special award for a special person, and the Reverend John Pemperin was our nominee for this year. And uh, John, because I've known him for a long, long time here in Davis, uh, he was, uh, he was, it was, it was such a well-deserved uh, recognition that at the event, uh, John received a standing ovation from the 400 people who attended that night. Uh, and, and I want to talk about some of the things that, that John accomplished. Uh, in his early years, uh, John received a scholarship, a uh, basketball scholarship to attend the University of Wisconsin. That's at the Division Ma in I Madison, school. Division I school. During this, uh, this uh, season that he played, he played against a guy by the name of Wilt Chamberlain, who went on to play for the Harlem Globetrotters, uh, made 100 points in an NBA game, and he's a legend uh, uh, playing. He's a seven foot one person who's no longer with us. Uh, John played against him uh, when the University of Kansas played the University of Wisconsin way back in the day. Uh, John then uh, was in ROTC uh, at the university. Uh, upon graduation with his BA, he, re he, uh, he entered the military, uh, which I think is important. I also served in the military. So John and I are one of the 1% who have been active duty that have served in the military. The other 99% in the United States have talked about it, but we have actually uh, been, so we're just one of that 1%. Uh, when he went into the military, he was assigned to, he went in as a second lieutenant, uh, served in a military unit in Chicago, and uh, upon discharge from the military, uh, John became, uh, went to the, entered the Divinity School at the University of Chicago. Uh, at that time, he was exposed to uh, Dick Gregory, a noted uh, comedian at the time, 
and Cesar Chavez, who spoke about the farm labor that John just alluded to. Uh, then John, uh, when he graduated from Divinity School, uh, he interned in Seattle, and uh, then he came to Davis in 1963 as the uh, assistant to the campus minister at the Cal ID Association. Uh, two years later, in 1965, uh, John, at the, uh, at the request of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, organized his famous Freedom Riders. He, uh, he organized the uh, bus uh, trip to Selma, Alabama, to take place uh, with the 50,000 demonstrators. Uh, he took 40, uh, 40 individuals from Yolo County, uh, of which Dick Holstadt was, was one. Uh, Terry Turner was another. He took clergy and he took other people who went for a week on this, uh, on this trip to uh, Selma, Alabama, uh, spent a whole week there, uh, and John learned some things about civil rights that he never forgot. Uh, upon the return back to Davis, uh, John uh, helped or organize the first uh, Human Relations Commission, uh, which was a prelude to the uh, to the to what is currently we have the Human Relations Commission, which was a result of the Tong killing at the uh, at Davis High School in 1983. John was pre that uh, they formed their own one because of his uh, what he learned in the Selma uh, demonstrations. Uh, so it's, an, it's important to add that at Selma, um, Viola Luisa was killed after the march. So she was killed after the march. So they were there at the end of the march and, 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 and luckily came home safely, but not everyone that was there came home safely. And Viola Loiso had, I think, five children mm -hmm. and she gave her life and she died after that march in wow. Selma. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, so uh, John was, and, and, and you gotta realize that back, back in 1965, Davis was a small community. Davis had less than 20,000 people. The university had 5,000 students. The University of California at Davis, which, uh, and if you go from the beginning, uh, where we had very uh, little diversity here in Davis, you know, John sort of saw that whole early, early uh, yeah. problems that people did have, the very few minority people who right. were here. As the university grew in, in enrollment, it yeah. brought diversity to Davis, All right. and that became more problems. Thank you. We have about two minutes left, so um, thank you very much. That's outstanding information on John. John, before we wrap, let's. Uh, this is the early years. Go back and tell us about your childhood, your 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 stardom in athletics, and remember, we have about two minutes left. Two minutes. So, yeah, Back this is a 15-minute segment. Yeah. Well, I was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's 90 miles south of Minneapolis, and the famous. Uh, singer who just passed, bless his soul. Uh, his song again was uh, Purple Rain, mm -hmm. and uh, Prince, that was Prince is from there, yeah. Was that the right? Prince. Prince, 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 Prince yeah. Purple Rain, yeah. Prince, Purple and, uh, Rain. Of course, that, that is uh, what tried to pick us up, you know, because it thunderstormed so much in that part of the country. Then uh, I was very active in politics and athletics because of my father being on the City Council, so I learned a lot from him about well, you what... You played basketball, you won a state championship in... And uh, I guess I had the state record, not yeah. just... <laughs> state I, record. Not to, just did I run, win, in high I had jump. the state record, so I called my friend in California. In high jump, right? In high, high jump. jump. Yeah, in high and jump. And I asked him, he said, well, how high did you jump? I said, six, one and three fourths. How high did the person jump in California? He's got the world record. And he jumped six eleven and a half. <laughs> Charlie Dumas was his Charlie name. Dumas. I remember the name. Yeah. Too. And uh, <laughs> so then I started reading the L.A. Times at the public library to find out about these athletes from California, and I uh, kind of fell in love with California. The the uh, all right. Well, I'm sorry that our time goes by very very quickly. Well, thank you for being here, uh, Rick Gonzalez Jr. President of Mexican American Concilio, and John telling us about the early years. We're going to do another segment on the later years. It's going to appear later on the show. We want to thank you all for being a part of In the Studio, uh, honoring the Reverend John Pamperin, a living legend in Davis. Thank you very um, much. With any further ado, we want to thank you for being with us today. All right. Take care.